Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello, Nikki Kinzer. We are in a post-pandemic world, but I don't believe that. I think we're still in a pandemic world. Yeah, I think the post-pandemic world, the first rule of the post-pandemic world is to realize you're still in the post-pandemic. Yes. You're still in the pandemic world. Yes, right? I agree. I agree. So we have a lot to talk about today about this. We this really transition do. is important. It's it's a tough one, especially mm-hmm. if you're following up on last week's conversation uh, about the challenges of transitions, right? especially with ADHD. So uh, it's a good part, too. I'm very excited about it. We should get right to it. Before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You know the drill. You get to know us a little bit better right there on the website. You can listen to the show right there. You can subscribe to the mailing list. We'll send you an email each time a new episode is released. Or you can uh, reach out to us on Facebook or Twitter at Take Control ADHD. If this show has ever touched you or helped you make a change in your life for the better with ADHD, we encourage you to visit patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Uh, that is where we uh, we have our listener supported podcasting stuff, right? You go there, you give us a few bucks a month and you get access to some neat perks. One of them is the live stream. You could be watching, oh, what you would have missed this morning in the live stream. I'm uh, rolling by my watching eyes. One if you're a patron. You, yeah, that's what we're doing yeah. right now. She's rolling her eyes. Uh-huh. She, she knows she wanted to talk about gross medical stuff. No, I really didn't. A, but thanks, did. Pete, for that. She did. <laughs> no, it's okay. We're moving on. And uh, so you can see all kinds of fun stuff that we do on the live stream before the show goes live. Uh, you also get access to super secret Discord channels, depending on the level that you're you're in over there. And our, our current goal, our current stretch goal is when we reach... Uh, the, the when we reach, I think it's now four more patrons, we're going to start doing a, a second podcast for members only. And That's that right. podcast is is me talking about technology and processes and tools and stuff. And that'll come out every two weeks. And so we've got 24 uh, steaming episodes of Fresh Pete podcast. That's right. Oh, Fresh Pete. That should deliver. be the name. Yeah, Fresh, Fresh Pete. Mm, mm-hmm. Oh, no. Oh, what about Soliloquy? No. <laughs> I like fresh peat. I okay. Oh no. Now I need a whole new Fresh Prince of Bel Air aesthetic. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well we'll see. All right. We'll see how that goes. Uh new name every week on Pete's podcast. Mm-hmm. You never know what it's gonna be. Uh, so uh, very excited about that. So y- you know, if you've been thinking about joining the, the Patreon group for a while, you get all kinds of fun other perks and you get to join Study Hall, Nikki's Study Hall. Yep. Uh that is a uh, freebie thrown in with your membership. There are all kinds of, of perks you can learn more about at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. All right, so let me go ahead and set the stage uh, around where I found the inspiration for this podcast. We are doing a series around transitions, and I was doing some research and and looking for different kinds of transitions mm-hmm. that we deal with. And I came across this article in Attitude Magazine from Sari Solden, and it was around returning to a post-pandemic world. And now this article was written in the spring of 2021. And probably at that time, if we think about that time compared to where we are now in the fall of 2021, uh, it probably looked a little more promising to say post pandemic world (laughs) back then. Oh, how the worm turns. Yes. Um, so I, what I want us to do is I think I feel that the article had some really good points and had some um, really good ideas and ways of how to get kind of back into transition, you know, from being at home. Granted, though, I will say, and, and we talked about this a little bit at the beginning, I don't necessarily think that we're in a post-pandemic world. I think we're still right in the middle of it. This is not going to be a show around politics or what we think 
or not think about vaccines. I just want to make people know that that's not what this is about. This is about transitioning from not being in school, going back to school, uh, being in an office eight to five, and then all of a sudden your world changes and you're at home and now you have to go back to the office, right? So these are just things that we we have to deal with regardless of what your beliefs are. Mm -hmm. Um, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to go through the different points in the article and we'll make sure to put the article in our show notes so you can read it yourself. And, you know, Pete and I are going to have our own spin on it. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that you opened the conversation with, I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about returning to a post pandemic yeah. apocalypse world. That is the yeah. kind of rosy sunshine attitude that I count on I from you, Nikki Kinzer. So optimistic yeah. about that. Yes. I'm going to be like Rob Hardcore. Lowe in, in, yeah, in that show. Hello, Pandemic. Uh, Parks and Rec. Hello, Pandemic. Hi, Pandemic. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So first point is not feeling guilty about what you did or didn't get done during the pandemic. Yeah. Okay. So this is something that I think is important for us to, to recognize because I definitely see it with clients. I see a lot of clients feeling bad that they not only didn't get everything that they thought they could get done during a shutdown, but they feel bad about not getting things done anytime. So I think it's a really um, important point to, 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 to talk about it. And what she says, and this is her quote, the last year was not a vacation and it was not a sabbatical. It was a trauma. As a result, our psyches have changed. We should give ourselves a break and realize we've all gone through something unprecedented. 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 Press, unprecedented. That word. Unprecedented. Yeah, you can leave that in there. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Millions of people have lost loved ones and or had the disease themselves suffering terrible losses. Yeah. And I just think it really is um something that we have to take a step back and and at the beginning of the of the uh shutdown of everything, you know, all of these uh things came up about organizing your home and decluttering and you can look at the museums and start a new hobby online and you know there were just all these things which all make sense i mean i can see why you know they came up because we want to use our time somehow sure. right um but there's also an amount of pressure that comes with that and i just i thought this was a really good reminder of um remembering this was a this was a traumatic transition that none of us were expecting and we still don't know how it's going to end or if it's going to end or how it's going to end and um, to give yourself some grace. I, I think that's, that's really important. And I went through that. I don't know about you. I mean, I absolutely went through that phase of, oh, we're, we're in a, a pandemic. So that must mean I have the opportunity to do a lot of things that aren't normal. Right. And mm -hmm. That, I feel like, again, in the eyes of past Sari Solden writing this article some time ago, uh, I, I think that's a thing that gets me thinking about not the things I've already given up on in the last, like, six months, but the ways my habits have changed, my behaviors have changed day to day that I'm, I'm terrified of not being able to shake again going the other way. Right. Like, right. And I think a lot of people that I've been talking to are dealing with that, like this whole experience of, oh, my God, I don't like I don't want to change again. I'm scared of changing mm -hmm. again. This was really hard change to make. And I I'm not ready to change again. And mm -hmm. um, and and so I, I think that's that's how, where I move from this initial point, which is. Um, now it, it's not that I feel guilty anymore about the things I didn't get done because I've right. already felt guilty about those things. <laughs> and right, now right. I feel guilty about my anticipated level engage of engagement in whatever comes next because I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's a very fair point for sure. Um, and, and, you know, we've had enough time for for some of us have had enough time to to get a little bit more comfortable where we are right now. Mm -hmm. So like you said, it's hard to just all of a sudden say that that's got to change too. Right. 
And how does that look? And I don't think it's going to look the same. And that's, you know, that's something else that that she uh, talks about and are kind of, this is her second and third point because they kind of go together. Mm -hmm. Um, But you may have liked not saying no to things. Yeah. Right? So as an introvert, I can totally relate to this because there was no pressure of me having to invite people over or me going to places that maybe I was kind of tired and didn't really want to go. It's not that I don't want to do those things or I don't want to have people over, but they do take energy and it does take, um, you know, for an introvert, it takes a lot of energy, I guess is probably the easiest way to sum and it up. And how wonderful it so, is as an introvert to not just not be invited to stuff for a while. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you don't have to say no or you don't have to like, you know, um, convince yourself or talk yourself into yeah. it. You know, I sound terrible. I sound antisocial and that's not what not I at, mean all, at all. But for somebody who's um, like, I totally relate to that. For somebody who relate who who lives with anxiety, like there is a certain yeah. amount of relief that comes with not having to face those things every single day. And I think the same thing mm-hmm. goes for ADHD. Like there are when the world slows down, I feel like it's given me time to breathe. Right. That's a real benefit to where we've been for my brain. Like it hasn't been such a constant daily hustle of shame that I'm letting people down because everybody is slowing down. All expectations have changed. And I don't like going back to the old way. I really don't. Well, and you think about the fear too, especially in those first, you know, few months, like life was dangerous if you went outside. And yeah. so there's all of that like underlying fear and like you said, anxiety. And I don't think it's easy to just forget about that. I mean, you know, it. I don't know if I'm ever going to necessarily go into a place where there's a lot of people and not think about who's got what and you know, do I need to wash my hands? Yeah. I mean, I think every, I mean, everybody's um, psyche is going to be a little bit different after this experience. And so one of the things that she says too is, you know, take your time going back and reflect on what you've learned about yourself. And, uh, and I think this is interesting because this is a transition period where you could start to set some new boundaries. If you've been a person who have all, has always in the past said yes to everything, or you're feeling like you're overdoing things, um, or you're overbooking or whatever, this may be a good opportunity for you to actually think, okay, what am I comfortable going back to? Mm-hmm. And what boundaries do I need to set? Not just because of COVID, but just because I want to live a happier life that's more balanced. Yeah. And this goes back to what we were just talking about. Like when the world slows down, it gives you an opportunity to reflect on exactly those things and take back some control in your life where you may have Mm -hmm. felt it had been taken from you without Mm -hmm. having the expectation of like of immediacy to it. Right. You don't have the pressure of, you know, oh, my God, they need an answer right now. You can really stop and say, what if I what happens if I do say no to this thing? Right. Mm -hmm. I can play Mm -hmm. out that drama a little bit and and see if if I can make sense of what best case, worst case scenarios are for me in in this scenario, like not going to this, um, you know, outdoor work picnic where, you know, people are maybe less conservative than you are in terms of, um, you know, social distancing, distancing and mass, Mm -hmm. or maybe you want to be less conservative yourself and um, and and maybe you want to find those engagements where you don't have to to worry about those pressures. So I I think on both sides, just having a chance to breathe is important and taking it. Mm hmm. Uh, okay, so her fourth point was, what are the new rituals that you might want to keep? Which, again, goes back into boundaries. But, you know, what were some of the things that you found in the last year that that really helped you and, uh, and you know, that you, that either helped you in some way of dealing with the pandemic, but also just made life easier? And I got to tell you, one one thing for me, for sure, is online grocery shopping never did it before, started doing it during the pandemic. And now I can't imagine ever not doing it. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> it is so convenient. Well, so convenient. I do. Are you, do you do the pickup or the delivery? I, I do the pickup. Yeah. So I'll order it all online, and then I go to the store and sit in one of those yep. little parking lots or parking spots that are just for this, and then they come out and bring it. That's out to that's me. our standard too, and it's pretty amazing. Occasionally, we'll run in and get something, sure. but it's pretty rare these days. And I think we are more strategic and better planned in terms of our meal planning mm -hmm. because we're doing it so mm -hmm. conscientiously at home like ordering the things that we need for the meals and not ex over exuberantly buying because we were hungry. So our grocery right. bills also gone down a little bit as a result. Exactly. Of it. So. Yeah. Well, and I mean, that's the other thing that people might find is that because they cooked more at home, that maybe they'll cook more at home now too, going forward, yeah. you know? Um, so there's a lot of things that, again, kind of looking at, at, at what can you take out of the experience that was, that, that was positive. I mean, what, you know, what, what helps you? Um, and then I think it's also, you know, coming back to when are you comfortable to, to start kind of pushing out of that comfort zone a little yeah. bit and thinking about intentionally, who do you want to see? You know, what, what places did you miss the most and make those things count because it's important to you and because you're still, you know, a little uncomfortable. Yeah. So we want to make sure that you're thinking about, you know, what you're, what you're doing. And, and I'll tell you, you know, for me personally, and I'm sure everybody else, a lot of people will feel this way too. That connection of seeing people in person, you just, it's so important for us humans to have that and uh and to be able to to give your loved ones a hug and to be able to see them in person and and see you know all of them not just their headshot you yeah. know <laughs> so i i really you know encourage you to to think about about that because it does definitely help you with your spirit and your soul and being able to get you know past some of the things that you probably are grieving about um you know with with what may have been lost so you know, I, I feel like we've we've changed our expectations of of socialization. And, you know, for example, there is a wonderful new food cart area in our side of town. And, and Portland is kind of known for its food cart culture. Yeah, and downtown right. has always had, you know, a lot of wonderful food carts. But out in the burbs where we are, like it it's not been no, a thing. Yeah. And there are some wonderful food trucks like collectives. They they actually there's one's called the food truck cartel that's in our area. And there are probably 30 food trucks that are all around a patio area that's that has been great. And and those kinds of things, like taking advantage of those for quick outdoor meals, lots of variety, so we can start to re-socialize and mm -hmm. remember that, oh, I do like as much as Zoom has been great, I do need human beings. <laughs> I, right, I do right. need even to be in proximity <laughs> even as an introvert. Yeah. We need human probably beings. <laughs> more as an introvert. We need human. You know what I mean? Probably. And yeah. So I, yeah, absolutely. I feel like that has like that has been really, really powerful. I was surprised at how I didn't want to stick to delivery for groceries and for food, you know, DoorDash, all those kinds of things after the first few months of the pandemic. Right. Like mm -hmm. I, I was uh, I was one of those like I wanted to leave flowers for my delivery people. I wanted to like yeah, I was sure. I was yeah. a, a, an enthusiastic tipper. And that experience has uh, I feel like, we, you know, it became a little bit stressful because it's more expensive. Right. It's in some cases sure. substantially more expensive. But also I realized not getting in the car and driving around and picking up things when I need them, um, you know, doing takeout for for meals or doing the grocery pickup, that was causing additional stress for me. It was making me feel really cooped up. So taking advantage yeah. of any opportunity to get me out of the house and being more intentional about, you know, maybe I'm going to drive to Forest Park downtown or, you know, on the West side to actually get a walk in this afternoon, something that, that causes that, that encourages me to move is it was really mm -hmm. big. The other thing that I, I did take on, I'm an Apple Fitness Plus guy. You yeah. know about Apple Fitness Plus with the watch? No. It's this mm -mm. new thing they started. I don't know. It's been a year probably. And it's you, you. if you have an Apple watch, you 
get a, a, and your you have the service which is a couple bucks a month but it's included in like their apple one kind of main account um, which we do and you can start a workout with a live trainer and they have this raft of live trainers and everything from high intensity workouts to yoga to all this stuff i'd never done yoga and i've been doing yoga for a year and i gotta nice. say it might be against the spirit of you know yoga to say this but i'm getting pretty good at it yeah, uh, you're a yogi. I'm kind of, I'm right? kind of jamming on yoga stuff now. That's and great. I'm, Good for that you. That has been something that I never, ever, ever would have tried, were it not right. for, you know, that sort of behavior change for the pandemic. So I'm yeah, trying really yeah. hard to to think about those silver linings of change in my life that aren't right. stressful, right? That mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. that that are where I can actually observably live in in this new skin as a result of mm -hmm. post post pandemic or pre mm -hmm. pre post pandemic. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think that one of the biggest things that I've taken away, um, is the, is giving up control, mm. you know, just coming to terms with not being able to predict anything. How does that, how does that manifest for you around the house? I, you know, in your relationship with your husband or with your kids, like how has that, how has that changed for you? locally, like in your micro culture? I think it gives me a lot more um, compassion and grace with my family because, especially with my kids, because, you know, I think anyone that's had, anyone who's a parent during this time, you know, we saw what it did to our children and I saw the depression and the anxiety and, um, you know, the things that, that were not good for their mental health. And so it was, I think, giving giving compassion and understanding and, uh, not trying to, uh, necessarily help them because I didn't know how to help them because I couldn't tell them everything was going to be okay. I couldn't tell them that their dad wasn't going to get sick. I couldn't, you know, and so it was, um, just being with them and, and being, and, and having as a parent, to say, I don't know. Okay. You just like, I feel like I'm going to start crying right now because that hits me so close to home. And mm -hmm. as a parent, having to look at your, at your kids and say, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to get sick. And, yeah. and if you do, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. I got sick and it wasn't pretty. I didn't know how it was right. going to hang it. out. Like, I didn't know. The pictures, you know, and that the, the sort of we have the photos coming up from a year ago today kind of thing. Right. And there was a whole like all July was like Pete with yeah. the, like the masks on his face, like unable to breathe. And that's not a great memory to come back to. That's like no. super triggering around here. And right. Um, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Ugh, I don't know. I know. That's all. I mean, that's it's just ugh. it's it's a uh, it's a heavy thing to talk yeah. about. And um but, you know, I'm glad that we can have the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I say that because this is a transition. It is a transition, no matter where you are in in it. And you're not alone. We're all going through it. And uh, yeah, I, I, you know, we don't, we know. don't know. We don't know. There is something that but, is both it's yeah, terrifying and liberating about that. We don't yeah, know. And right. we used to talk about it. I mean, take take five years ago on this show, we might have said, you know, the, the liberation of saying, I don't know, or my whole thing about, I don't have a strong opinion about that, like really changing the way we right. think about things. But that has taken on an unbearable weight now that we're, yeah. we've lived through the context of the last 18 months and what it has done to our mm -hmm. culture. And um, so, yes, that's huge. Yeah. All right. There you have it. Oh, well, that we didn't, we didn't really today. talk about politics at all. How'd we do? That was okay. I think we did great. <laughs> we did great. Okay. I hope I so. Do too. Unless we get all of like the negative feedback. Well, I, but... you know, I hope people take it. Please don't yeah, do that don't, we to don't, us. We don't like it. We don't it. like that as much. <laughs> that's, that's triggering too. Um, mostly yeah. we just love doing the show and love being able to take a minute and reflect on, on the kind of transition that is, that this is. And I think for, for me, the, the big takeaway is, um, be patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you are suffering the anxiety that comes along with this, uh, just know, yeah, as Nikki said, you are not alone. Uh, we are mm -hmm. all in this together. And whatever we can do to lift each other up is, um, you know, that's the thing to celebrate. So 
Absolutely. Um, thanks everybody for hanging out and listening to the show. You know, we've got, I posted the link to the um, uh, article that Nikki was poking, uh, poking at. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki was inspired by, uh, I posted in the discord chat. Um, we are doing our, our, a lot of our live stream conversation in discord. I will also um, uh, post that in the show notes and uh, discord mom, Melissa will make sure to update the ADHD resource library. If you haven't checked that out, uh, make sure you jump into the resource library. If you're looking ever looking for any of the apps or I don't know, recipes, articles, anything we've ever talked about on the show, <laughs> we've, we've, uh, consolidated into the ADHD resource library. And, uh, so make sure you check that out as well. Thank you all for downloading and listening. We appreciate your time and your attention. Uh, don't forget, if you have something to contribute, jump over in the Show Talk channel in Discord. That's where we are. And you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm-hmm.